Hey everybody, welcome back to On Your Mental. This is the podcast that shares candid, open, sometimes vulnerable conversations between and about men. And this is part two of this episode with Jeff. I'm one of your co-hosts. My name is Ruben. I'm the cooler co-host. My name is Kabir. Once again, arguably. Uh, we've got Jeff here again in part two of this episode. If you haven't checked out part one, you kind of need to to jump into this one. It just will make more sense. So go and watch or listen to part one if you haven't already. Uh, enjoy part two as we get into following up from meaning and purpose of life. We dive more into the purpose, but we also talk a little bit about selfishness and morality in this episode. You're going to like it, and we'll see you in a second when it starts. Peace. <laughs> a full glass not bad. wine wine's pretty no good. not bad yeah it's, I think it's, dry. Pre- it's not as sweet for sure no the jam jar is a little sweeter mm. yes a hint of oaky afterbirth <laughs> a bit of an oaky afterbirth <laughs> what's that from <laughs> from the office, the office yeah. <laughs> I, remember, yeah. I remember it now i remember it now 90 percent of our quotes no 40 <laughs> Uh, well, I'll, I'll start this by saying welcome back because it's like technically we will have this will have either we'll been a, a week break, literally we've been <laughs> back and forth for maybe five minutes but for the audience this is either a week from now or two weeks from now it would have been up to you <laughs> you would have determined it it could have been a 50 likes on the last one and if there was this is a week from now um, we're gonna just pick things up right where they left off uh, if you want a summary of what was talked about quite frankly I'm sorry <laughs> uh, you, can, you, can, you can go watch the previous episode watch the previous episode or if you just want to get caught up watch the last five minutes of the last episode mm. you'll get the the summary in there i'm just not going to do it again and i think it's because i i can't <laughs> so in the last episode we've we been had a glass of wine, wine. Before. <laughs> i have had three glasses of wine i wouldn't say that i'm drunk but i'm at a point where i know that i can't like i just got to keep moving you yeah. know so what we're going to start with is we're going to pick up where we left off, which is we're starting to talk about selfishness. And Jeff, you pointed out uh, that that humans are inherently selfish. Yeah. So, God, I hate this. I'm gonna. I, I'm never gonna cut out every time I say I hate this or make a super cut of it. <laughs> but one of my focuses in my psychology degree was evolutionary psychology, which mm. I found as one of the most interesting courses in 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 the courses that I took for psychology, and. For me, as a person, I've always needed to find the the how do you say it? the the weight of the reasoning, um, and what I mean is, how do you really justify things or the things you think about? And there's really a couple of ways of doing it. One is the history of something, because if you look at the history of something, mm. it provides a explanation of how things are. Yes. Why are we still doing things the same way that yeah. we are? We can really look at why we're here based on how we got there. Mm. So history uh, history was is very interesting to me in that way. There's also another concept called ontology. Kabir, what does ontology mean? Ontology is used in a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Starts with an O. <laughs> the ontology of something mm. is how things came to be. So that's a little bit different from history. So history is the the historical facts and the 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 times, uh, sorry, the chron- the chronological mm. order of relevant information that mm. turned into this thing. That's the mm. history, right? As well as there's a certain subjectiveness to history, which we won't get into because history is written by the winners, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. Mm. But then there's also the ontology of things of how things came to be, and I think evolution is a very interesting aspect or explanatory force for ontology and why humans are the way that we are. Mm. That's why I ascribe to evolution. Um, Something I kind of wanted to bring up, which is once again on the higher order of of things, is this, we have to ascribe to paradigms. Mm. What does paradigms mean? It's in a sentence. (laughs) It's a paradigm like in in a way of like, like a way of thinking. It's it's a accepted set of rules, mm. right? So the way we should conceive of the world is to ascribe to certain amount, certain paradigms. And, and I know I'm repeating myself, but I'll use science. Mm. Science is a paradigm. 
right? You're using the rules of science to view the world. Mm. And I've always found this very interesting about our current society where no one's going to deny science, mm. right? We know science well, works. some people do. <laughs> okay, but like, it's funny because I'll even go into detail. Science is a system of observation mm-hmm. through experimentation, right? Yeah. So if you ascribe to what science is, it literally means you do have a uh, fuck around and find out. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. literally what it is, yeah. which is awesome. I, I love that quote. Mm. Because you are doing something, changing the variables, seeing the outcome, and take that as truth mm-hmm. until there is new truth. And that's the thing about science that people don't quite understand is like, yeah, this is what we know now, not what we'll know forever. Mm. But I need to ascribe to that. I need to, and therefore things that you cannot observe and find conclusions, I cannot ascribe to. Mm -hmm. Religion, as we talked about previously, and that's why I'm personally an atheist, Mm -hmm. because I can't use science to figure that out. Sure. And, and, you know, certain spiritual, spiritual aspects or like alternative health things, you can't both ascribe to science and then believe things that science has disproved specifically. Mm. You can't, you shouldn't, you can, mm. but you shouldn't live a life of contradictions, mm. right? Sorry, that was a big off thing but, sure. I, but like I think how does this tie into <laughs> selfishness <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i know I don't know if we no, that's what we're talking about but it's important mm. because we are thinking of big picture things the meaning of life which is the previous episode to me is defining boundaries and defining a set of rules to follow in your life that can be universalized to all humanity because we have a shared experience mm. right so as we previously sorry to talk about so much about the last episode and for people who are watching it back to back, but mm. it's important because religion provides the rule book. On the opposite mm. side of that, we need to create a rule book. Mm. And these are th- these are the steps to create these are the defining things to create that rule book mm. by ascribing to paradigms of science of X, X, Y, Z, that type of thing. So evolution is part of that. That's what I want to get back at. So yeah, very roundabout saying evolution has made us selfish by nature there's a famous book the selfish gene hmm. you guys heard of that no oh nope. really it's like hawkins you know uh, that guy hawkins he's pretty famous he's pretty famous i only dude. know like hawkins lab in Is that, stranger okay, things dark da- 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 yes. oh man i'm fucking up all my um things this is really big book called the selfish gene where mm-hmm. essentially because of evolution and because of genetic fitness right mm-hmm. um, and the definition of genetic fitness Okay, so I want to I want to talk about that because people are like uh, survival fitness is not like this. Survival yeah. of the fittest is your ability to pass your genes exactly. on to Thank the next you. generation. That's what Thank fitness you. Thank you. That's what the actual science definition of <laughs> fitness is. Is just mm. the ability to pass on your genes, mm-hmm. right? So in terms of evolution, it is literally survival of the fittest in that way. And mm. to do so, to a degree, you have to be selfish. Yeah. So it's built into us, even though we're communal sort of a species, there is a sense of selfishness that is literally by design, mm-hmm. des- evolutionary design in us. Mm-hmm. But the concept that I always bring up and in philosophy and moral philosophy is that is is not ought, right? Mm-hmm. Just because something Coming is up. something. <laughs> Just because something is something mm, is not the way it should be. be. Right. And it's funny because I, I, I don't know if you want to keep this in, but I'll talk about it because it's what comes to mind is gender roles. Mm. Right. We have a genetic predisposition for certain gender roles for men and women. Right. Mm-hmm. When we're caregiving, all that to so men are more dominant, et cetera, et cetera. That may be true because of our evolution, because of fitness. That's the way it has been. That the way that, that but it's not the way it should be or ought to be right Right. and um you know i keep using this term is is not ought right just because something is currently happening this way is not the way it should be and we should look um evolutionary psychology isn't a prescription as an explanation right i'm just describing why it currently is Mm -hmm. i'm not saying that's the way it should be sure so because of our because of every evolution of every every species whole point is to procreate right Mm -hmm. it's inbred and humans are no different in that way so by definition to a degree we have to be selfish Mm -hmm. 
so what does that mean? <laughs> right? <laughs> and and is it okay to be selfish? Cool. Let's talk about that a little bit and the selfish mm. gene and the inherentness of our selfish nature. Sure. Right? And how even though we are selfish, we ought not to be, right? And what I really want to say is that if we can define the meaning of life as the things that we choose to suffer for, the other part of that is there is inherent suffering. Mm -hmm. If we can, to a degree, agree <laughs> that we should try to alleviate all forms of suffering, right? Mm -hmm. We would live good lives. Can we agree on that? So, sure. so I'll, I'll I'll state that again in another way, right? Mm. Life is inherent suffering. We've already kind of described that from birth and, and mm. that type of thing. And there are two types of suffering, inherent suffering and suffering that we choose to do. Yes. We can, we are okay with the suffering that we choose to do because it makes us better people. Mm -hmm. But are we able to somehow alleviate the other side? So let's say you lived a life where there's only the suffering that you chose to go through. Yes. But remove the inherent suffering. Is it a possibility? No, because things are out of your control. Okay. I need some examples. Okay. Of, of, <laughs> of inherent suffering. So I'm going to agree with you. There's no way for us to remove our inherent suffering, but we can help remove the inherent suffering of others. Mm. We can't do it for ourselves, right? But if we see someone we care about suffer something in their lives that's inherent to them, right? Mm. Meaning that they didn't choose to be in that position. Right. right. So finances. You become homeless. Yeah, become mm. homeless, finances heartbreak uh family issues right illness illness we to a degree can't alleviate our own inherent sickness family issues heartbreak financial issues but us as ourselves have an ability to alleviate that for someone else and that's why i think that's the purpose of life hmm. because ultimately even though there are these defining life as suffering if you can if you can ascribe to that then we should try to alleviate it and if we can't do it for ourselves we should try to do it for others hmm. and that leads into my very oh man we got into this way too quick actually that's okay i feel like Just steer this was like the going. end point Just of of where i wanted where to bring this conversation going. but it's coming about naturally in the sense that i have this concept and trademark <laughs> <laughs> um do you know what a pallbearer is uh, they, they, that's something with the. <laughs> they, they're the people that carry your casket into. That's the, the one. Okay. I was, I was in my head I'm like carrying <laughs> no, like a flag, really but no, carrying a casket. But, but my concept of the purpose in life is to be the pallbearers of those we care about, because there are certain humanistic things, and one of those is mortality. We all know we're gonna die. We all know we're gonna suffer. Therefore, we're trying to alleviate the suffering of others until they die. And that's the reality of the situation. So that's what I've come to the conclusion of the purpose of life. Because there are other things that you can conceive of, right? Mm -hmm. But those are selfish things. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm tying back to this idea of selfishness. And there are things you're allowed to be selfish for. and But it's in the service of Paul Barron. We should be fit so we can help others when in need. We should be financially capable when, so that we can help those in need. Mm. You should build yourself up so that you can help people. Mm. And that is selfishness for the sake of unselfishness. And that's the only reasonable way that I can be selfish to myself. That makes sense. <laughs> I love that. That makes it's, sense. It's, it's, it's like when, when your needs are met, that's when you can extend out to others. You know, it's like you, they, you, you can't, or it's very difficult to to think about spotting somebody's bill when you go with your friends when you yourself are in debt you have about like 20 bucks left in your checking account whatever it is right whatever the scenario it's hard to be like yeah sure i got you but when you've reached that point and we're talking about like a financial example here but you've reached that point where that's no problem for you yeah i can spot you because you're struggling and i know you're not doing all right that's 
letting them live a, a better and happier life, leaving their suffering. And the, exactly. And that brings us back to the meaning, like, you know, working to the job, we're just using finances, but it could be health or anything else. Right. Mm-hmm. I, you know, the person that works crazy amount of hours to make sure they're financially stable, I could do for selfish reasons, right? I could be the guy that says, yeah, I'm working two jobs. So we're going to buy a nice car and, you know, eat fancy meals mm-hmm. and all that type of thing. But if you change your mindset in the sense of I make myself financially capable so the, that those I care about mm. when they're in need of me, I can support them. All of a sudden, you're suffering for the right reasons and you're leaving the suffering for others. Is that not an incredibly large weight to bear? <laughs> yes, but there should be a willingness to bear it. Mm. And getting back to this whole concept of happiness oftentimes we find we was it the best the best way to help others is, sorry the best way to help yourself is to help others mm. often we find the answers when we're providing our support you know what i mean that does a couple of things it it's but it's choosing it's choosing the suffering it's choosing to bear the responsibility sure. right and people can choose not to bear the responsibility and choose a selfish lifestyle but then that goes back to how you be remembered right the relationships that you build what's the point of living if we can't bring anything with us Hmm. and i feel like this is an appropriate solution to all those problems and 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 the thing that i want to sort of say is i didn't this wasn't like a thing i thought of and then i made all the steps possible for this to work Hmm. it was I'm figuring out all the things that worked and didn't work and came to this conclusion. Hmm. And I think to that's be the important. Bear. You're right. It, that's the natural, what was it? It's like Sherlock. That was like when all other impossible things are brought out, no matter how impossible, that is the conclusion. Hmm. Right. And, and that's how I've always thought about finding the answer, which is always finding what doesn't work and what ends up, being the thing no matter how much you don't even want it right Mm. you don't want that to be the answer but you have to use your logic versus your emotion to determine that this is the thing that i have to do Hmm. right it's the it's the burdens you need to bear interesting would you say that that is a duty Yes, sorry. Yeah, thanks for getting it. To, to, cause, yes, because in, oh, in, our, in our preparation you know, for this, we talked about duties. Yeah, and and that's why that's so important because what I just described before you even saying duty, people, have, that is literally the definition of duty. It's it's bearing that responsibility regardless if you want it or not because that is the answer. C- can I talk about something else? Of kind course. of interesting. No. No. <laughs> Something that I want to position to, you know, the audience and you guys here and something I've thought about a lot is what are the lies we tell ourselves in order to live? Sorry, did I get really loaded question, man? (laughs) And and I'm going to frame that a little bit, right? Please. Mm, mm. (laughs) I feel like in our lives, we frequently tell we we brainwash ourselves into these lies in order to keep living. And. The example I'll use to give it some context, right? How many people stay in a relationship because they lie to themselves saying that I love this person when they don't anymore? Hmm. That's a real thing, right? People stay in relationships way longer than they need to because they're unwilling to bear a burden or responsibility of leaving that. So oftentimes, and you know what? It's it's a, uh, it's a what's it called? When you have trauma, it's a... Uh, thing that you do to compensate a mechanism coping mechanism coping mechanism (laughs) yes oftentimes we lie to ourselves as a coping mechanism Mm. to live an understandably easier life sure but ultimately the ends to that is is not something ever good right a waste of time and whatnot Mm. so my question always is what are the lies that we tell ourselves in order to live the lives that we do hmm. and should we uh, i'll answer the should we <laughs> okay uh no <laughs> yes yeah i mean if you wanted to like a- answer that purely like best case scenario of course no you shouldn't do that but you you even said it it makes it easier and sometimes to me is is, is there value in 
sometimes making things easier than dealing with the thing that it might be an immediate, it might be that sort of like pleasure response that we talked like about like in the last episode, instant gratification, where this is easier for me to live this way and not change and not stop, let's say, living a lie. Maybe easier is better sometimes. But if we ascribe to the meaning and purpose in life, mm. if we truly have you made these, these definitions yes. for ourselves, and this is the rule book that we want to live by, mm-hmm. we sh- this is something that we need to willingly suffer for. Right. And and it's this is not my original thought, but I've always thought that the right thing to do is always the hard thing. Mm-hmm. And whenever you need to make a decision, what is the easy choice and what is the hard choice? Guess what? The hard choice is probably the right one. Mm-hmm. And bringing it for, for me and part of this conversation of why I want to take it from the top down, right? It's because we are inundated, inundated, I love that mm-hmm. word. inundated with all these choices, some easier, some harder. How do we make those choices? It's the harder choice by definition because mm. it is the one we willfully suffer for. Mm. So, okay. So to reiterate, yeah, if we understand the meaning of life is suffering that we willfully do to make us better mm. and understanding that is, there is necessary suffering and suffering we willfully do, mm-hmm. we have the control of the willful suffering to make us better. Mm-hmm. How do we alleviate the necessary suffering that is just living life? Mm. And we can't for ourselves. So the natural conclusion is to do the, do it for others. Right. And the term that I use is pallbearing mm-hmm. because as people, one of our core things about us is that we will die and we know that we will die. Mm-hmm. So we should help each other until we eventually do. That is the purpose, ultimately, Mm -hmm. based on the meaning that has been defined. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a rebuttal to that? Can, Can we think of things? Can you poke holes in that? Should we not do that? The only possible rebuttal I could think of would be if in some way, I don't know how this would work, but in some way, if in wanting to alleviate that uh, that that suffering of others, it makes your life worse. Right. But that comes back to that whole selfishness bit that we've been talking right. about. The allowable suf- selfishness, yes. right? Where you can be selfish in the service of others, which mm-hmm. still goes back to this pallbearing thing, mm-hmm. right? Um. And the example that I use, you know, like, don't, don't be so hard on yourself, <laughs> mm. even though these are very like strict and heavy things, right? You're bearing the suffering of others mm-hmm. and you try and make yourself better. But part of that is relaxing. You're allowed mm. to go play a fucking video game if mm. you want, right? You got the gaming. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok. Yeah you're allowed to recharge mm-hmm. because if you're not the best version of yourself, you can't be the best version of yourself for others. Sure. And, and, you know, I feel like people already think to a degree, something like I got to be best me. I got to be best me, but why? Mm-hmm. And something I'll always remember from one of my first philosophy courses, right? Was that philosophy is the study of the ultimate. Why, why are we doing anything? And then once we have an answer, we keep asking. Mm. <laughs> so for those people that, uh, you know, in our society, people who want to make a lot of money, why? Right? Mm. Hedonism, legacy, power, whatever. We didn't get to power, but like that's mm. that's a thing, right? Really examine why you're doing something. And ultimately, if you can, the, ultimately, the only real justification of that is to help others. And I'll put one other little thing there. Others just need, yeah. Uh, something that comes up a lot in moral philosophy is like helping everyone, mm-hmm. right? It's like, do I have a duty to help everyone? Because mm-hmm. everyone deserves help, and some people are even more deserving help than others, right? Mm-hmm. But the caveat to that is, we are also people. We establish 
special relationships with other people. Mm -hmm. And I think if we don't have, I don't have the capacity to care for everyone in the world and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people who want to be these people who care a lot are overwhelmed, right? Um, by, by the tragedies of the world Mm -hmm. and we don't have the capacity to do that. And I'm telling you that's okay. But choose the people to care for and care deeply for them. And if everyone can do that for a couple of people, everyone in the world will be cared for. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that's a really nice way of putting it, though. But that's what I want in mm-hmm. the world, right? And that's why I ascribe to Paul Bearing specifically, right? That's why if you if you look at the image of a pallbearer, it's one person with like six to eight people. Yeah. It's that if if that one person can establish close relationships with more than one person hope the hope is humanity can take care of each other right. and that sounds so hippie and it sounds so like <laughs> mm. but it, it, it but it's not like i wanted that to be the resolution that was the natural conclusion with everything else being not the right thing to do mm-hmm. so then are you saying that's the only purpose of life I would say that that would be the primary, like every, every other purpose stems from being the best version of yourself to help other people. Like you can take that as the, like, that's Mm. the, that is the answer to Mm. be the best version of yourself to help other people. And every other purpose is to help that process. Hmm. Can you think of a situation where it wasn't, or or what? No, are your no, I'm just trying to think of where procreation fits in. That. Yeah, because thank you, because that's right. that's exactly what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. But I know yeah. that's com- those are two completely different yeah. ideas. And like maybe let's say, I don't know, I don't know, two thousand years ago right. or a thousand years ago, procreation might have been the agreed purpose of life. Let's say Purpose. so. So my thoughts on that specifically is that procreation is the natural process of life. Hmm. Y- yes, you derive meaning and purpose and stuff, but is your children not just another person in which you be the best version of yourself to make their lives better? Hmm. I get that. That's right? that, that. That's that's what I was starting to wonder, and then you started bringing up procreation, right. which is exactly what what I was thinking. Which is that yes, you like that's that's along the way. Mm-hmm. You know, you you procreate, and those people now become some of that select few that you yes. care deeply for. Yes, your your offspring become part of that select few, and you know that answers the question of people who don't want children, which mm-hmm. is fine, mm-hmm. right? You still have people in your life that you yes. care deeply for, and people right. that you are still wanting to make their lives better, right? Versus if you think the meaning purpose of life is to have children, then th- th- but by the way, we're thinking top level, right? Yeah. Everything needs to lead to that. So if you think th- having children is the top level, then you're not helping other people. Mm-hmm. But if you switch it, where being the best version of yourself to help people, children are included. So it's yes. more, inclu- it's inclusive. And we want a paradigm which is highly inclusive of every situation. And I feel like that one is. Yeah, we, we all agree. We all agree. <laughs> yes, yeah. we think, fig- oh my God, can you believe yeah. it? We figured it out. We figured it out, the <laughs> meaning and purpose of the life. Didn't think we get there. But. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, by the way, like just, like this is what I want from the audience. Anyone who's mm. listening to this, give your rebuttals. I, I I I love it when people give me like um resistance mm. because then we can have a conversation and strengthen my mm. argument. Mm. Right? <laughs> That's it. Ah, I'm okay, your... sorry. <laughs> That's it. Strengthen or change my mind, but more right. than likely strengthen. Yeah. Um and, and 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 that's what I want, right? Yeah. And that's the purpose of true philosophy, true the purpose of a conversation and an argument it. is is to find the truth of the matter. Mm-hmm. And I'm I, I and I want to be wrong, mm-hmm. but I haven't been. Mm-hmm. But I want to be. Mm-hmm. So fill those comments up, with TikTok, Whatever Instagram, it is. YouTube, yeah. any flaws you can think of in my argument, I welcome because mm-hmm. I I you are helping me. Mm-hmm. Right. And I want that to to really help define it. And and the reason I've come to this conclusion, because I haven't found a plausible, you know, rebuttal to this. 
If you sure. can give Jeff a plausible rebuttal where he changes his mind, yeah, I love eyebrow that. gone. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> his. oh my God. <laughs> <That's AT. laughs> All right. Um, so eyebrows aside, um, <laughs> why be good and moral and how does that fit into the meaning and purpose of life then? That's a big one. Because morality really is the rule book. Mm. Right. I I really love how this conversation happened like organically because this whole rule book idea was never mm. part of this was yeah, never kind of brought that up part, part of one. the the questions. Like this is a new idea that came up and I and I love it, right? Because it really helps us formalize and understand why we should do things, right? Mm -hmm. Um morality is the rules, right? It, it, and duty it, you know is the basis of how those rules work. Mm -hmm. We should do things regardless if we want to or not, right? And and I'll link it into what we, you know, the whole meaning, purpose, all that type of stuff. We work out, we should work out, and th this is the oughts, right? Mm -hmm. Oughts is not is, mm -hmm. it's the ideal, and we work from the ideal to the real, and the ideal situation is that we're healthy, we are highly educated, right? We're good to the people around us. We don't tell lies. We're we're honest people. Those basic conceptions of justice and honor and, you know, being a good person, those are the duties that we ought to do regardless if we want to or not. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, regardless if we actually do the right thing, wanting to do the right thing is important in itself. So wanting to do the right thing is the right thing the right thing which is the definition of duty sure i can't imagine someone not wanting to do the right thing even just in the back of their head oh i'm uh, for selfish reasons right for right. gain but like it's still the thought's still there it's got to be there like it has to exist and they may, Other they may be like deliberately a, ignoring it no even ignoring it it's still there but what i'm i guess i might be describing a an evil person <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that yeah, what yeah, I'm like good and evil no yeah. i mean I'm sorry to say, but there are shitty people. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. And like, I'm glad you think that because almost <laughs> by definition, it's like inconceivable to you yeah. that people don't want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, there's going to be circum circumstances where you know what the right thing you say is. Circum circumstances. <laughs> yeah, <it's> Cer <laughs> certain circumstances. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, you see the guy, the stranger walking in front of you, suddenly a $100 bill drops out of his back pocket. You know, you know, but do you really want to? No one will find out. You know, those are the right. easy, like, those are the easier moral questions, but there's going to be way harder ones. Mm. And if you have a rule book, if you have a defined meaning and purpose in life, then I feel like you have a appropriate direction to go in the difficult, you know, difficult choices in your life. The right. easy choices are the easy choices, but the point of this conversation and morality and duty and a meaning of purpose is the hard ones. Mm -hmm. And hopefully this helps someone out there understand why they're doing the things they do uh, and hopefully for the better. And I guess that, that in a way comes back to what you said earlier about how if you're facing two decisions, generally speaking, the difficult one is the right one. And that plays into morality then. So why be moral? Why be good in this conversation around meaning and purpose of life? is that making those right decisions. The right decision is the hard decision, mm -hmm. which is the suffering you're willing to bear. Right. Thank you. And that brings it back to our meaning and then our purpose, which allows you to then alleviate the suffering. How many times have we like <laughs> tried to <laughs> suffering, <laughs> suffering, <laughs> suffering, <laughs> suffering. <laughs> and, and that's what I mean. I like in my studies of ex existentialism and stuff like that, it's a very, depressing course mm. but the point of it is to understand it and when you find yeah life. when you understand, when you understand it and you start it, to appreciate it thing. yeah yeah it's a, suffering is a is not a bad thing it has necessary. a negative connotation to right. it when you use it in given language like use it in the sentence you've said that yeah. like juggling with things like yeah if i say like yeah you should suffer that right. sounds like shit it may right. not even be the right word for it right, right. exactly mm. and mm. i feel like people just associate suffering with negative connotations mm. when when suffering is really to agree to a degree a a, a, a was a, a crucible have you heard mm. of that no 
uh, a crucible is essentially a test and is usually a very difficult test right a crucible is like a blacksmithing term i think mm. um but essentially it's a trial by fire and i feel like suffering is always a trial by fire which if you survive it then it makes you a better person mm. and that's the thing right if you survive it but how will you survive it by being the best version of yourself mm. that's why that's important that's why it's okay to be selfish mm -hmm. if it's making you a better person so how does a meaning and purpose affect your day-to-day -day, then <laughs> huge broad concept that we've talked about now in these two episodes here how does this affect your day-to-day -day? how do i leave this conversation and think about this tomorrow you know how do i how do i how do i reflect on this okay so gaming <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> so i'll just use that example so if you're gaming to procrastinate or to distance yourself from the things that you need to do probably not good hmm if you're gaming because you require that to make yourself a better person, to get your mind off things, to reflect and give yourself space, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. There is no right answer. And that's the shitty thing about morality. And my degree is after all these years, I can't tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. But everything that you do do, make sure you do it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. So the next time you're doing something and you feel a little guilty about it or you're doing something that you th think how do you say this if you're <laughs> next time you're doing something think of the reasons why you're doing it mm -hmm. regardless of if you're suffering and if you're willfully doing so or it's a something that makes you a better person and if you can justify it i say you can do it but if you reflect on it and you can't move on hmm an example i think of though and this i don't know if this throws a wrench in anything at all i doubt it does but um there's no way i'm coming no up with a question to, to like change <laughs> your mind here but in the let's say i'm making a decision to go to the gym in order to procrastinate from other <laughs> duties that i have at home yeah one would argue that going to the gym provides some benefit. I am making myself a better person. I am improving my physical well-being. That might improve my longevity. Maybe I live another day, and that <laughs> one day is the day where I helped my grandson <laughs> do something I couldn't Thank do. Thank God for that squat. I exactly, can lift this rock off this exactly. guy. I can lift this car off this guy. You have no idea. <laughs> that scenario, though, like I'm, I'm yeah. maybe passing up responsibility, something that I should be doing. Sure. To do something else that's good for me. Is right. that okay? I feel like in that specific scenario, you've answered your own question. You're doing something to not do something. Therefore, mm -hmm. the answer is you're not, you're, you're actively choosing <laughs> not to do something so that you shouldn't go to the, do, do, just do that thing. Do just that do that thing. thing. It's funny because, okay, and then I don't know a fat if you, slob. I, I, <laughs> it's funny because like previous to what we're shooting right now, you can cut this out and I was having a conversation. I was literally watching yours and yours was procrastination. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that's what i remember from yours you feel kind of guilty about procrastination and yeah. stuff and i feel like this is relevant to yourself where you real you, i procrastinate everyone procrastinates yeah but it's that realization of your procrastination yeah should in reflection of what we're talking about you're like okay fuck, i'm procrastinating let's just do something mm -hmm. and hopefully the point of this conversation is is that mm -hmm. so you answer your own fucking question which is you know you shouldn't be if you know you shouldn't be doing it then you don't do it i knew it i know happen. it's just it, when you put it in those terms it's so simple <laughs> he's like Richard, maybe in <laughs> 10 years i'll need that uh, yeah. <laughs> so th that's how yeah. i hope this this conversation is relevant to yourself yeah. i guess i can keep this in yeah. as mm -hmm. yourself yeah. as a specific example any flaws that you have you know or I, I do really believe most of us have this ability to do to know what is the right thing to do, which mm -hmm. is the harder thing. Mm -hmm. So choose the harder thing, but be the person that can do the harder. You're thing. right, because in I'm, that same I'm scenario, just repeating I just, myself. Yeah. No, but in in that same scenario, I just gave you like the easier thing is to go to the gym. The gym itself necessarily isn't easy to do, right. but in that scenario, yes. when I'm making that decision, that is the easier thing to do would be to go to the gym instead of. Do whatever thing I had to do at Dishes. home. Dishes. Dishes. <laughs> Edit. Whatever. Um, awesome. I mean, I try my best to tie things up. Is there <laughs> anything that either of you want to add on at this point? Uh, so yeah. our next episode, we're going to talk about free will and agency. <laughs> <laughs> so we can talk about that. I wanted to talk oh, about yeah. that. 
That will be the next episode. <laughs> oh, God. I'm I gonna, have to prepare gonna, for that one. Yes, because I feel like that can be an entire conversation, Free too. Will and yeah. what? And Do you believe agency. in fate? Oh, in fate. <laughs> fate. I'm, I, from what I know, mm. like, from what I, the definition I know of fate, no. Okay, cool. Good. But I feel Maybe like... Maybe I do. Tell me what fate is. But you feel how some people are like, I'll, I'll let the universe decide. Yes. Right? right? Uh, whatever will be, will be. Even those general casual statements. I think it's a very easy way of coming to terms with shit that sucks. Yes, exactly. And I feel like when people say things like that, they are um, like putting under the rug their their responsibilities. I do say similar things. I say it is what it is a lot of the time. Sorry, yeah, my mom hates it too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can cut that out. I just, I just, no, I no, no, say, no, no. That's a, it's a fun topic. That leaves us with something that we could dive into another time when you come on the podcast, Jeff. Um, to try my best and some. <laughs> oh my god, are we said. doing this? So, All right. Well, we've we've done part one again. If you're for some reason watching this one and you haven't seen part one, go watch part one. For God's sake, it would make a lot more sense what we're doing here. In part two here. We talked about selfishness. We talked a little bit about morality. We talked a little about doing the right thing, but we came to a definition of or an understanding of the purpose of life. The purpose of life being to be your best self in order to alleviate the unnecessary suffering of other people. Yes? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, we, we tied that in from our definition in the previous episode uh, around meaning of life, which was that the meaning of life is to bear some degree of suffering, like willingly bear some degree of suffering. Um, and you do that in order to reach that point where you become better. You make those decisions to, to bear suffering, to go through things that are difficult, to make the tougher decision because that decision oftentimes or in your own words, almost always, I guess always, is, is the right decision that leads to you being a better person, which ultimately will allow you to meet that purpose in life, which is to alleviate the suffering of the people that you care about. That's the other piece that we talked about too, is that when we talked about, let's say, uh, the purpose being procreation, uh, that, that purpose is, it's, it's not necessarily the purpose of life, if we're agreeing that it's this thing of being your best self, but let's say you do procreate, you have offspring. Now, being your best self involves alleviating the suffering of your kids, alleviating the suffering of your next generation, your bloodline, whatever it's going to be. I feel like that's the definition of, of parenting, really. Yeah. We live our lives to pass on the lessons we learn so that we can alleviate the suffering of our children. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's structured that way versus that way. Mm -hmm. You become the best version of yourself so that you can alleviate the suffering that you have created yourself yeah yeah <laughs> right <laughs> this is the other aspect we we born children into this you know world without their consent mm. you know and and the hope is that they live better lives than we do which i think is a really beautiful thing mm. until we reach utopia anyway oh, suffering is endless suffering. oh yeah there's no <laughs> more so oh, that that sounds horrifying it is like no suffering actually sounds like heaven so i've always said this Heaven sounds horrifying. <laughs> Have you watched The Good Place? No, no, yeah. Oh, Wait, The Good Place is so good. The Good Place. No, I thought it was The Good Place. It's yeah. on Netflix and like it it it's like a sitcom about morality and they do it in such fun and funny ways. Mm. And on the basis of this is a book Morality called or Mortality? Morality, okay. sorry. Morality. It, you did it, say morality, I was just clarifying. Okay. Check out The Good Place. It's a fun way to get into ethics. Mm. It's hilarious. Cool. Well, and Kirsten Bell is kind of hot. <laughs> Agreed. <No. laughs> uh, hashtag Kirsten Bell. <laughs> yeah, this. There's um, there's there's. I hope that people listening to this have come away either just enjoying the conversation, challenging your own thoughts, leaving with some questions, and leaving with when we talked about at the end of our conversation today in this episode, um, asking yourself why you're making the decisions that you're making. That's the thing that you can take in, into your day to day. Right. Like, why am I deciding to go to the gym today? Is it because I'm going to the gym to better myself or is it because I'm putting something off that I shouldn't be putting off? Right. Um, yeah. Take take something away. I hope you did. I'm sure you did. <laughs> if you You're like this episode for didn't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's coming from me. And, and I want discussions. I want 
fucking discussions, I want you to say, Jeff, you're fucking wrong. I have a PhD in fucking. Someone fu- tell him. Yeah. You're wrong. Hey, the 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 PhD people that have you know ethics and morality and philosophy as a background, please, please, please give me rebuttals. I would love to study them, and I I would either hope to strengthen my argument or for you to change my opinion. That is the hope. There's got to be someone that listens to this. Anyways. Fucking! <laughs> I feel like we want to talk forever about this. Like we keep wanting we to get to this, but we keep we keep going on and on. Which you know, I I hope the listeners out here and stuff this in you know initiates this conversation. Mm. That that's really the point of this is I really want people to initiate these conversations that you don't normally have mm-hmm. because in their they're own not conversation. This is not no, like no. a couple of beers on a night out. Let's no, talk no, about the no, meaning no, no, and purpose no. in life. This is deliberate. This is deliberate, yeah. and I feel like more people should be more deliberate on the on the big picture things. Well, mm. more people don't really have Jeff around, <laughs> <laughs> and you can't. Anyways, y'all, if you enjoyed this episode, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, we will see you from this one in two weeks from now with another episode with who knows what's going on this is going to be a ways away for us because this now we don't have to film for a while uh everybody we will see y'all in two weeks from now